Good afternoon, glad you are with us. Protective orders, those have come back into focus because of their relation to Sunday's murder-suicide in Meridian. That tragedy has sparked a lot of interest in protective orders, and we'll explain more about that in a moment. And the question is, is there anything more a victim can do other than a protective order in a case like this? Because protective orders are important for victims as they try to seek a safeguard against who they think is possibly going to hurt them. We got to talking about this in the newsroom and wondering about an effort last year in the Idaho legislature to prohibit gun ownership by anyone convicted of domestic violence. KTVB Shira Matsuzawa is in the newsroom with more about that and what's ahead, Shira? D House Bill 585 failed to pass last year by five votes. It would have barred firearm possession by people who are convicted of misdemeanor domestic abuse. That's on top of the existing law against felons own, owning firearms. Now, Sunday's murder-suicide was not a case of domestic violence or abuse, but more so child custody. But last month, a law similar to House Bill 585 went into effect in Louisiana that would require anyone convicted of domestic abuse or anyone who has a protective order against them to turn over their firearms. We spoke with Representative Melissa Wintrow this afternoon about why she believes this bill is needed. I think this, this legislation is so needed. Last year alone in our state, we had 17 fatalities related to domestic violence and firearms. So anything that we can do to keep firearms out of the hands of the most dangerous people, we should be doing that. We should be protecting our families, our first responders. And in this case, sometimes people even kill themselves. That's a tragedy. As our Morgan Boydston reported yesterday, Heidi DeLeon, one of the victims in Sunday's murder-suicide, failed uh, filed a protection filed for a protection order just 24 hours before that deadly shooting currently there is a federal law that states if someone is convicted of domestic violence or has a protective order and the court has found that person to be a danger a judge can rule that the person in question cannot possess a firearm the state proposal differs from that federal law though because it would impose a temporary restriction as I mentioned last year's bill failed to pass by five votes, we reached out to those who opposed it, both islands, uh, Idaho's Second Amendment Alliance as well as the Freedom Foundation. Uh, they were not able to speak with us today. Dee. All right, thank you for that, Shira.